scoop time. And uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, some computational complexity of some problems. OK, so in, uh, in, in machine learning, it's uh, at least in some settings in machine learning, we're often given a data set uh, and some sort of likelihood function. And there's sort of three canonical tasks that arise here. Uh, the first one is maximum likelihood estimation, where we simply search for the parameter that maximizes the likelihood of our data. Uh, and then if we, if we take maybe a Bayesian approach and, and introduce a uh, prior distribution over those parameters, this gives us a posterior. And we could imagine also trying to maximize this posterior density, that's map estimation, or because it's a distribution, we could imagine trying to actually sample from this posterior distribution. Okay. Uh, as far as computational complexity goes, uh, most of the uh, hardness results that we know are for maximum likelihood estimation. So for example, we know for topic modeling and, and, and phylogenetic trees and, and, and mixtures of Gaussians that uh, uh, maximum likelihood estimation is in general a hard problem, but uh, comparatively less is known about uh, the, the corresponding Bayesian problems. So in this work, uh, we, we really uh, ask this sort of, we pose this question, um, is it possible to, to relate these tasks uh, in terms of their computational complexity? And, and what we show is, is that uh, indeed you can, and, uh, and, and in fact, uh, these Bayesian problems are at least as hard as maximum likelihood estimation, at least in, in, in certain cases of interest. Okay, so, uh, so why would we expect a, a result like this to be true? Um, in particular, you know, we're, we're dealing with maximum likelihood estimation, that's an optimization problem, and we're talking about maybe hardness of, of sampling. Um, and there's a couple of sources of, of intuition here. So one has uh, been talked about uh, at length in this, in this uh, session, which is these algorithmic connections between optimization and sampling. So uh, there's you know, some results out there that say you take a, a popular um, optimization algorithm and you add some noise to it, and this turns out to be a pretty good sampler in a lot of cases that we care about. And, uh, and then it's also known that, uh, that if you have a good sampler for some you know, schedule of, of distributions, then this turns out to actually be able to optimize certain classes of problems. So, uh, so there's definitely a connection out there that we might you know, hope to, to, to shed some intuition on the problem. Uh, and, and also, you know, within you know, the particular problems that we care about, there's loads of statistical intuition uh, because we know from classical results from the 40s and 50s that if you actually have some true model and your data is generated IID from this true model, then your maximum likelihood estimate, your map estimate, and the entire posterior are actually going to be concentrating around this model. So in particular, they're concentrating on each other, so they should approximate each other pretty well. Okay. Uh, but in our case, we're interested in, in computational hardness, and so our problems definitely aren't IID. So, um, so we can't use this directly, uh, but it turns out that we can actually achieve a very similar effect. So, so the general reduction that we look at is this uh, idea of data duplication, okay? So you just give me a data set, and I duplicate the data uh, a whole bunch of times, and, uh, and, and lo and behold, uh, most of the weight is going to be on that, uh, on that likelihood function. Uh, so we get this exponential weighting uh, for only sort of like a polynomial size duplication. So that's great, um, but it turns out that there's sort of some issues here that need to be addressed in order to make this sort of like a very formal reduction. The first one is uh, that, uh, that in general we're, we care about these sort of continuous parameter spaces. Um, so for example, for topic modeling or mixtures of Gaussians, these, take, these parameters take on continuous values. We want to make sure that our, our reductions uh, prove something and that these problems aren't hard because we're asking it to compute a real number, but rather because they're sort of intrinsically computationally hard. Um, and you can, you can really see sort of the issue when you look at uh, that things get kind of tricky when you look at uh, approximating distributions uh, with, dis with uh, discrete distributions. Uh, the gold standard sort of distance that you would care about is this total variation distance. So this is sort of like the commonly used distance in Markov chain convergence analysis. Um, it's the supremum over measurable sets of, their, of the disagreement between two distributions. And you can see it's not too hard to see that this is always one when uh, one is continuous and the other is discrete. So, uh, so obviously we can't do total variation distance. Um, 
It turns out that, that actually for, for sampling uh, in particular, there's a very nice notion of approximation that's, that's kind of in vogue in machine learning right now, which is this Wasserstein distance. It turns out to be a really great way of relating uh, discrete and continuous uh, um, distributions. Okay, so, so these are sort of how we define our problems, uh, the, the computational versions of these problems. Uh, but the second challenge that we, that we still have to address is that uh, our data isn't actually generated according to the model, okay? So the, all these convergence results, they sort of hold sort of modulo uh, that uh, you have a, uh, uh, with respect to some maybe parameters of measure zero. And, uh, and it turns out that in a lot of cases that we care about, there are parameters that have like measure zero. Uh, so for example, in topic modeling, very popular uh, prior distribution to put over your topics is a symmetric Dirichlet distribution. And when this parameter alpha is bigger than one, then it's sort of falling off to zero on the boundaries, okay? Uh, and it turns out actually that, the, that if you look at the, the hardness result out there, the, the, uh, the solution, the maximum likelihood solution from that hardness result for, for ML estimation and topic modeling actually falls on the boundary. So it actually gets sort of, uh, it has uh, density zero, okay? So in general, uh, for arbitrary instances, it would be very difficult to sort of relate anything over here, but it turns out that, uh, that the hard instances uh, that we look at, that we construct, are generally well-structured enough. Uh, so, uh, so for example, for, for the map reduction, uh, it's simply good enough to guarantee that there's some theta prime that, that is, uh, has large enough prior density and that it also has large enough uh, likelihood, and while you wouldn't be able to guarantee this in general, for, for, the, for the types of hardness results out there, you can actually pull out these types of structures. So in this work, we, we do pull out these types of sort of generic conditions uh, and formalize them, and, uh, and we show that when these, when these hold, there are these polynomial time reductions uh, from ML estimation to these Bayesian problems, and then we apply it to two sort of cases of interest and show that map estimation and approximate posterior sampling are, are hard for topic modeling and for mixtures of Gaussians. Okay, so that's it.